we will discuss the topic of uh, solutions. Solutions topic is uh, very important as far as the chemistry subject is concerned because many of the chemical reactions we carry out in solution phase. So, what is first of all a solution? Solution is an intricate an intricate or homogeneous mixture of two or more components means two substances an intricate or homogeneous mixture of two or more substances means homogeneous means the two substances what we are mixing will completely mix with one another and if once they are mixed they cannot be they cannot be distinguished from one another means if once a solution is formed then the two components that what we mixed we cannot distinguish if once the solution is formed. For example, in our regular day to day life we use many solutions the simple examples are salt in water sugar in water alcohol in water and even air is also a solution. So, these are the best examples well known examples of solutions as you know it very well once we add a salt to a water if once the solution is formed we cannot distinguish in the solution which is the salt part and which is the water part as water and salt will homogeneously mix with each other. You cannot distinguish which is salt and water similarly sugar in water even in the air which is a mixture of different gases, but with naked eye we cannot distinguish in the air what are all the different gases that are present. So, these are solutions then if they are not intricate now heterogeneous mixture the another type of mixture also what we define is heterogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture of is means if suppose two components a and b are mixed but after mixing A and B can be distinguished means suppose sand in water if you add sand to a water you cannot it cannot form a true solution because it will form the after solution is formed sand and water easily we can distinguish from one another such kind of mixtures are what we call heterogeneous mixtures and these are not considered as solution this is not a solution it is only a heterogeneous mixture it is only a mixture but not a solution so the point what we should understand is that mixture can be combination of any two components but in that solution means that once the mixture is formed if all the components cannot be distinguished then it is a solution if they can be distinguished it is not a solution that is the other way also what we call is homogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture right. The next is types of solutions types of solutions here already we have defined what a solution is which is a homogeneous mi mixture of two or more components then what are the different types of solutions. Here solution normally whenever we say 
what we always by default take into consideration is that only liquid solution always we expect that it to be in liquid state, but the solution not necessary to be only in liquid state. Solution can be in solution can be in any of the three physical states that is gas, liquid or solid. It can be in any of the three physical states and in this when we another point also what we should know is in a solution out of all the components the component which is in lower quantity proportionately whichever is in lower quantity that is called solute and which is in higher quantity that is solvent. So, here another way of uh, defining a solution is solution is a mixture of a true solution is a mixture of solute and solvent. For a solution so solvent is always only one component, but solute can be any number. Any number of components can be solute. So, finally, what you should understand is solute plus solvent is equal to solution. Now, in the types of solution what we discuss is what all can be the solutes and what all can be the solvents with respect to physical states of substances means solute should be solute in what phase solvent in what phase and finally, solution will be in what phase. Now, based on physical state of solute and solvent solutions can be of the following types one is solid solid example alloys of metals like brass bronze etcetera these are all the mixture of alloys are all the mixture of different metals or non metals in which the two metals or more number of metals whatever that they are involved in alloy they are uniformly mixed and if once an alloy is formed for example, in bronze the copper and zinc we cannot distinguish right. Second is solid solute and liquid solvent example as already we told salt in water sugar in water this is solid liquid solution. Third is solid solute gas solvent. This is our carbon particles in air particulate matter. This is the, these three are the examples in which solid is a solute in common and solvent is solid liquid gas. And then fourth is liquid solute and solid liquid solute and solid solvent example amalgam like zinc amalgam right and then liquid 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 
solution. In liquid liquid solution means both solute and solvent or liquids. Best well known example alcohol in water. As you know very well that alcohol and water are miscible can be mixed to form a homogeneous solution where if once the mixture is formed you can't distinguish which is the alcohol part and which is water part. Okay. Gas in liquid. Gas in liquid best example is aerated drinks. Carbon dioxide in water. As you know in all our aerated drinks that is the coke, thumbs up and all that what we take in which you know that a gas is dissolved in water that is a homogeneous solution and you know when we open the bottle we get the carbon dioxide gas out. So, it is a mixture of carbon dioxide in water which is a gas in liquid homogeneous solution. Then the next is the gas solid. Gas solid is nothing but camphor. Camphor is which sublimes very easily it is gas in solid type. So, camphor, naphthalene, sublimable solids they are directly convert into a gas. Now, for the liquid in gas the best example is water droplets in air. This is the moisture in the air water droplets the drizzling what we get is the liquid in gas type of solution. Then for the next is gas as a solute and the other three solid liquid gas being solvents. What are the different examples? For a gas in liquid the example is the camphor the sublima sublimable solids camphor, naphthalene etcetera naphthalene balls and gas in liquid is aerated drinks that is the carbon dioxide in water cold beverages is what we call in general commercially we call cold beverages that carbon dioxide in water as we open the bottle we get the gas that is the carbon dioxide gas. Now, for the gas and gas which all of you know very well that air is a mixture of gases like nitrogen, oxygen and other inert gases. Right? So, these are the different types of solutions. Now, another point what also you should know is in all this finally, what is the physical state of the solution? Physical state of a solution is always same as the physical state of the solvent like as you know that liquid and gas water droplets in air they are present in the air in the gaseous state. Gas and solvent as you know camphor and naphthalene we found them as solids. Gas and liquid aerated drinks in carbon dioxide water, carbon dioxide in water that is in liquid state the aerated drinks is what we get. Gas in gas anyhow both of them are gases so obviously it will be in the gaseous state and also another important point is number of phases in a solution number of phases in a true solution is always equal to only 1. Actually here there is again there will be a slight confusion normally people may expect that the two phases are one is a solute phase another one is a solvent phase, but if once a true solution is formed the solute is completely dissolved in solvent there will be no longer any solute or solvent, but what all we can find it is only the solution phase. There will there is no more solute phase separate, no more solvent phase separate, but it is all only a solution phase right. Okay. The next we go to how to express the concentration of solutions. Methods of expressing concentration. of 
solutions. How to express the concentration of a solution? First of all, before going for what are the different types or the methods by which we express the concentration, first we should try to understand what is the meaning of the term concentration. The term concentration also has another synonym that frequently also we use is strength of a solution both are same concentration and strength they both are same what is the strength of a solution or what is the concentration of a solution concentration of a solution is nothing but the relative relative amounts of solute or solvent in a solution so it is what is the amount of solute in a given uh, amount of solution or what is the amount of solute added to uh, what amount of solvent so expressing the amount of one component with the total components or one with respect to the other is what we call it as strength or concentration of solution for uh, to express it, and here in this topic of solutions we mainly discuss about liquid solutions what do you mean by liquid solution as already we told liquid solution is nothing but the solvent is liquid for any solution in which the solvent is a liquid is what we term it as liquid solution again in that for liquid solution we have different methods of expressing the concentration one is the percentage weight by volume second one is molarity third one is molality fourth one is mole fraction fifth one is fifth one is normality sixth one is there are some less important parts per million parts per billion but these are less important and normality is something different here mainly we discuss about this first four percentage molarity molality and mole fraction for liquid solution Now we continue with methods of expressing the concentration terms. Now the different methods available are percentage weight by volume molarity molality mole fraction about these four first we discuss and the normality and other terms like parts per million ppm parts per billion ppb these are all as and when that is required there we discuss separately but first let us go through all these things now in this first what is percentage weight by volume the meaning of expressing the concentration in percentage weight by volume is that it indicates the weight of solute in 100 ml of solution this is the meaning weight of solute in grams weight of solute in grams present in 100 ml of solution for example if you say that 10 grams of sulfuric acid is present in 
100 ml solution. Then the concentration is represented as 10 percent weight by volume. So, in this 10 grams of sulfuric acid is dissolved in 100 ml of solution. So, it is in general we denote it as x percent weight by volume is the general notation means x grams of solute is dissolved in 100 ml of any given solution. right? So, that is the designation. Now, in this if we want the weight of solvent then what we should know is the density of solution. If density is d gram per ml of solution is the density, then weight of 100 gram 100 ml of solution is 100 into d is the weight of solution. Then weight of solvent in this is 100 into d minus x grams. This is the weight of solvent because out of 100 ml solution x grams is present. 100 ml solution weight is 100 into d grams. D is the density. From this if you subtract this weight of uh, solute because this is the total weight of the solution. From that if you subtract the weight of solute then you will get weight of the solvent. right? Molarity. This is the most commonly used concentration term. The percentage weight is used when the concept of mole is not introduced, but after the concept of mole is introduced for chemi chemical calculations, the concentrations of solutions are more uh, useful in expressing in terms of molarity. And what is molarity? How is it defined? Molarity is defined as number of moles of solute dissolved in number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 liter of solution. Number of moles of solute present or dissolved in 1 liter solution is what we define it as molarity. Now, so, and it is of course, de denoted with the symbol capital M. Molarity is equal to number of moles of solute present in 1 liter of solution. So, it is number of moles of solute by volume of solution in liter. Right? Now, number of moles of solute in turn, we can write it as weight of solute by gram molecular weight of solute into 1 by volume of solution in liter. This in turn again we can write it as for any given volume of solution it is weight of solute by gram molecular weight of solute into 1000 by volume of solution in milliliter. So, molarity finally, the most frequent way of using it is that weight of given solute divided by its gram molecular weight into 1000 by volume in milliliter. If it is volume in liter then it is directly 1 by V. So, number of moles and the other way from this what we can write is number of moles is equal to weight by gram equivalent gram molecular weight or which is also equal to molarity of the solution into volume in liters. This is how means if concentration of a solution is given in a molarity and certain volume of solution is given, then how many moles of solute is present in it? We can determine just if you multiply the given volume with given molarity of solution, we will get number of moles or if the weight of the solute is known, 
if number of moles of solute is known molarity we can de determine in any of these ways. Now, we discuss two methods one is percentage weight by volume another one is molarity. How to convert percentage weight by volume into molarity? Percentage weight by volume to molarity. This is suppose if a solution is x percent weight by volume then molarity of that solution is equal to 10 x by gram molecular weight of the solute. How is it? x percent weight by volume meaning is x grams of solute in 100 ml solution. Therefore, molarity is equal to weight x by gram molecular weight into 1000 by volume in ml that is 100. So, it is equal to 10 x by gram molecular weight. So, this is how a given strength of a solution in terms of percentage x percent is converted into molarity in simple term as molarity is equal to 10 x by gram molecular weight or molarity is given what is a percentage in any way one unit you can convert into other unit in this way. This is represented with symbol small m there should not be any confusion molarity is capital M molarity is small m. What, what is the difference of molarity and molality and first of all what is this molality is? molality of a solution is defined as the number of moles of solute number of moles of solute present in 1 kg of solvent that is number of molality is equal to number of moles of solute by weight of solvent in kg. Try to understand the difference in the case of molarity it is the number of moles of solute per volume of solution, but here this is weight of only solvent not weight of the solution it is the weight of the solvent in kg. So, this molarity in turn so it is n by weight of solvent which in turn you can write it as weight of solute by gram molecular weight of solute into 1000 by weight of solvent in grams. This is the formula or the expression from which we can determine the molality of solution weight of solute gram molecular weight of solute this is weight of solvent right. Now, Again here suppose if percentage weight of solution is given as a percentage weight or x percent x percent weight by volume is the solution given then its molality to know what you can write is molality is equal to weight of solute that is x by gram molecular weight of solute into 1000 by to know the weight of solvent what also we require is the density. So, then the 100 d will give you the total weight of the solution minus x grams that will give you the weight of solvent as already 100 d minus x is the weight of solvent in grams that already we told. So, this molality is equal to x by gram molecular weight into 1000 by 100 d minus x this is the if concentration is given in terms of x percent weight by volume. So, if concentration is given in terms of x percent weight by volume how to convert into molarity and how to convert into molality both we discussed here right. Now, molality molarity molarity is number of moles of solute by 
volume of solution this is volume of solution molality is number of moles by weight of solvent so how to convert one to the other just if you look at this now i can write molality is equal to a molarity into volume of solution by because this molarity into volume of solution molarity into volume of solution is nothing but number of moles that you can write it over here so molality is equal to molarity into volume of solution divided by weight of solvent and this weight of solvent in turn you can write it as molarity into volume of solution by this volume of solution depending on that volume into density that again will give you the weight of solution minus weight of solvent this again you can write it as where x is the x is the weight of solute d is the density of solution so v into d that will give you the total weight of the solution x is the weight of solute so this will give you the weight of solvent in kg right so a uh, whatever may be the term that is given one concentration if it is given in percentage weight we can convert that into molarity molality and one can be converted into another one and more precisely what i would like to also tell you is that in case of a very dilute aqueous solution one can take molarity as approximately equal to molality in case of a very dilute solution one can take that molarity is approximately almost the same as molality the difference will be very small the reason being that very dilute solution first of all what is the meaning of very dilute solution very dilute solution means the concentration of solute the number of moles of solute very dilute means the weight of the solute the number of moles of the solute are very very less compared to the weight of solvent or number of moles of the solvent that is what we call very dilute very very less when such a low concentration of solution is there then the density of that solution will be the weight of the solution the density of the solution will be almost same as the density of the pure solvent or weight of that pure solvent what i mean to say is density a very dilute solution is the case when density of solution is approximately equal to density of pure solvent then we call it as if this is satisfied then we call it as a very dilute solution in that case molarity and molality are almost same the next is mole fraction mole fraction meaning is number of moles of solute present in total number of moles of solution it is represented with the symbol x here in the mole fraction either you can express the mole fraction of the solute or mole fraction of the solvent in all the previous cases the concentration always were refers only the quantity of the solute with respect to the solution or solvent but here it is either the number of moles of solute or number of moles of solvent whatever you take you can express the mole fraction of the solute as well as the solvent now means mole fraction of solute for example if you take it is number of moles of solute by total number of moles of solution number of moles of solute is nothing but number of moles of solute divided by number of moles of solution is nothing but number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent 
So, mole fraction of a solute again now is equal to number of moles of solute that is weight of solute by gram molecular weight of solute divided by weight by gram molecular weight of solute plus weight by gram molecular weight of solvent because number number of moles is equal to weight by gram molecular weight and so obviously in the other way what also you can write is x solvent that is mole fraction of solvent is equal to weight by gram molecular weight of solvent by weight by gram molecular weight of solute plus weight by gram molecular weight of solvent. Now, from these two expressions if you look at it, some of the mole fractions, some of mole fractions of solute and solvent that is x solute plus x solvent is equal to 1 fraction of solute plus fraction of solvent the total is equal to 1 and now in the continuation now what we see is how this small fraction we can relate it to the other concentration terms molarity molality and thing now we will see that. Now, the mole fraction for a very dilute solution, mole fraction for a very dilute solution. Again, as I told already, very dilute solution means the number of moles of solute are very, very less compared to number of moles of solvent. So, in this, suppose if you take x solute is equal to n solute by n solute plus n solvent and as we told it is a very dilute solution. Therefore, in a very dilute solution, number of moles of solute are very much less than what number of moles of solvent. Therefore, n solute plus n solvent is almost equal to only n solvent being the solute is very very less. Therefore, now you can simplify that mole fraction of solute is equal to only number of moles of solute by number of moles of solvent. So, it is equal to weight of solute by gram molecular weight of solute into gram molecular weight of solvent by weight of solvent. So, you can simplify the formula into a simple term that weight of solute by gram molecular weight of solute into gram molecular weight of solvent solvent by weight of solvent. This is x solute. Now, this very easily we convert into we can convert into molarity as molarity is equal to number of moles of solute by volume of solution. So, here again I will write molarity is equal to number of moles of solute by volume of solution. So, that as it is if you take number of moles of solute is nothing but x solute into n solvent. So, molarity is equal to x solute into n solvent by now this is n solute is equal to x solute into n solvent 
that is in solute by volume of solution is what we call it as molarity. So, mole fraction into number of moles of solvent by volume of solution. Similarly, molality is equal to again number of moles of solute by weight of solvent. So, for that weight of solvent is now what we can now this now number of moles of solute is again x solute by x solute into n solvent by weight of solvent that is the only difference. So, like this you can convert one concentration term into another concentration term by converting one form to the other form. These are the various conversion terms that one can convert one form to the one term to the another term. Right? So, with this we can the how what are the different methods of expressing the concentration, how we can convert one form to the other and how to go for the calculations is what we discuss it till now. Okay?